Hello developers and once again welcome back to One Code Fam channel. In this video series, we will be taking you through the process of building a RESTful API and we will start from the introduction to REST API, setting up your environment development, packages installation like Mongoose and Express, and up to setting up MongoDB database for our RTPL data. I have to keep you waiting so let's get started. To start with, let's talk about what is RESTful API. RESTful API is a type of application programming interface or API that adheres to principles and constraints of the REST architectural style. Now that sounds a lot and intimidating but to make it simply, it only means that RESTful API uses REST to communicate with the server. REST is abbreviation for Representational State Transfer. It is an architectural style that outlines how network resources are accessed and interacted with over a network, typically the internet. It emphasizes a stateless client-server interaction model. Now when talking about REST API, one of the key concepts that we're going to tackle is the CLAD operations. The heart of our API creation adventure are the four letters C, R, U, and D. These letters stand for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. These four operations, commonly known as CRUD, represent the core operations we perform on data when building applications. First, let's talk about the Create operation. This is where we bring new data into the world. Think of it as adding a new article to a blog or a new user to a system. Then we have the Read. Reading data is like opening a book and understanding what's inside. We use this operation to retrieve information from our API. After that, we have the update. Sometimes, data needs a little makeover. That's where update comes in. We modify the existing information without creating an entirely new entry. And lastly, we have delete. When it's time to say goodbye to a data, we use the delete operation. It's like removing a post from a social media feed. The code operations is the foundation of working with databases and APIs. Now that we have a solid understanding of CRUD operations and how they form the foundation of our API functionalities, let's dive deeper into how we actually perform these operations. This is where HTTP methods come into play. Think of CRUD operations as the actions we want to perform like creating, reading, updating, and deleting data. And now, HTTP methods are the specific tools we use to carry out these actions on our API resources. For this example, imagine you have an article website for sharing and posting articles. Remember when we talk about creating data? Well, when we want to add a new article or a piece of information to our API, we use the HTTP method post. It's like sending a message to the API saying, hey, here's something new to add to the collection. As for reading data, when we want to retrieve information from our API, we use the HTTP method get. It's like asking the API, hey, can you give me this specific article or all of the articles? Now, when we need to update an existing resource, like modifying an article's content, or details, we turn to the HTTP method put. It's like sending a revised version of that resource to the API. And let's say we would like to make a partial updates, like fixing a typo or updating all the specific fields. That's where the HTTP method patch comes in. It's like sending a memo with changes to the API. And lastly, when we're ready to be parallel to a resource, it's time to use the HTTP method delete. It's like telling the API, please remove this article or data from the collection. Understanding these HTTP methods is crucial because they define how clients interact with your API. Each method has a specific purpose and action associated with it, making the interaction standardized and predictable. Now that we have a deeper understanding on HTTP methods, let's talk about API endpoints. When a client such as web browser or mobile app wants to perform an action on your API, it sends a request to a particular endpoint. This request contains information about what action it wants to perform along with any data needed. When the client sends the request to the specified endpoint, it reaches the server. The server's job is to understand the request, perform necessary action, and send back an appropriate response. This interaction is the heart of how applications communicate over the internet. It's like having a conversation between the client and the server with the endpoints acting as the topics you're discussing. To give you an idea, this is how an API endpoint should look like. All right, let's start by understanding what API endpoints are and how they are structured. Imagine an API endpoint as a unique URL that represents a specific function or resource within your API. It's like a door that clients can knock on to request or send data. The URL structure of an API endpoint often follows a pattern that's easy to understand. Let's take a look at this example. This URL represents an endpoint for interacting with articles in our API. If we are going to break this down, we're going to have three key components. First, we are seeing the HTTP colon to forward slash any example.com. This is often called as the base URI or the domain. It's like the home address of your API. 
In a real-world scenario, this would be the address where your API is hosted. Next comes the forward slash API. This part indicates the API routes or paths. It's like the entrance to your API where all functionality begins. Finally, we have the forward slash articles. This part specifies the endpoint itself. It's the specific function or resource you're accessing within your API. For instance, it could represent articles, users, or any data. Now that we've laid the groundwork by understanding API concepts, CLAD operations, and how requests are sent to the server using endpoints, let's see how we put all of these into the action. Let's start by creating a new folder in our desktop or any directory that we would like to use. Let's just name it REST API. Now let's open our VS Code and select the folder that we just created. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you are already done installing Node.js on your system. If you don't, be sure to grab the latest version from the official Node.js website. Let's install necessary dependencies, and to do that, let's open the terminal. After that, let's initialize a new npm project within this directory. Let us type npm, space followed by init, space hyphen y. Hit enter and you will see that a package.json file is created. Using this package.json file, we will be able to track the dependencies that we're going to install inside this directory. Now let's start installing the dependencies that we're going to need for this demonstration. Let's start with .env. Let us type npm, install, followed by .env. Hit enter to start with the installation. .env is a popular module that allows you to load environment variables from a file into your code. This is useful for storing sensitive information such as API keys and database passwords. After that, let's proceed to the installation of the Express.js. Express is a popular web framework for Node.js that makes it easy to create REST APIs. To install this, let's just simply type npm install express. For this REST API demonstration, we're going to use Mongoose. Mongoose is an ODM library for Node.js that allows you to interact with MongoDB. We're going to use MongoDB for the database of this demonstration. For this REST API demonstration, we're going to use Mongoose. Mongoose is an ODM library for Node.js that allows you to interact with MongoDB. To install this, let's type npm install mongoose. To give us the best possible learning experience, we will going to use MongoDB to actually store our data into the database. And we are actually done with the installations of dependencies that we need for now. Now inside our package.json file, we can actually monitor and track our dependencies installed in this directory. We can now create our .env file. This will contain the environment variables that we're going to use. Let's create a new file inside our main directory. Let us keep this a file named .env. Now inside this file, let's type port. Then let's assign a value of 4000 for our server. Inside this file, we will also store our MongoDB URI connection string. Let us type mongo underscore URI. Now for the connection string that we're going to assign to this variable, let's proceed to the MongoDB Atlas website. Now let's visit the MongoDB website and create an account. Once you're done creating your account, you will be directed to this page. The first thing that we're going to do is build a database. To do that, click the Build a Database button in the center. After that, from the plan selection, let us select the pre option. Then select a provider, I leave it to AWS. For the cluster name, since we're going to create an article website, let's name it Article API. Once we're done with that, let's click the Create button. And let us just verify the CAPTCHA. After that, you can type and create your desired username and password. As for mine, I'm just going to auto-generate my password. Let me just... And then let's click the Create User button. After that, you will see that we have successfully created our username and password. To 
proceed to the database access. In this tab, we can configure the network access configuration settings of our database. To add our IP address to the addresses that can access this cluster, let's click the Add IP Address button. Finally, let's proceed to the database tab by selecting the database option. What we're going to do is to connect into this database and manipulate this using the REST API. We can also click the Browse Collection tab. Click Connect. Then let's click Drivers. Finally, we can now copy the connection string of our database. To do that, let us just click the Copy button. Now let's go back into our BS code and paste it here in our .env file. Now what we're going to do is to replace this file. Save coming from the MongoDB. And that's it for today's episode. In this video, we've laid the foundation for our REST API project. And in the next video, we'll continue by creating schemas, controllers, routers, and setting up Postman for testing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.